You can spend any amount of money on a fancy deluxe charcoal grill. We found some that cost in the thousands of dollars. Now, we're serious cooks, but we're still not looking for the Rolls Royce of charcoal grills. We just want a well-designed backyard grill that helps us make flavorful barbecued ribs, smoky pork loin, juicy chicken, steaks, and burgers without taking out a second mortgage. So we set an upper price limit of $400, and we chose seven charcoal grills. We included our longtime favorite. It's called the Weber One Touch Gold 22 and a half inch kettle grill. It costs $150. Now, while that's a fine grill, we wanted to know if it's still the best choice. Our very first test, assembly. With some of these grills, you come home from the store with an enormous box of a million parts and some terrible instructions. Now, the worst of these took a pair of testers nearly two straight hours of hard work. The best of them took just 20 minutes. That's a big difference. Then we started cooking. Now, probably the most common use of a backyard grill is just grilling right over the coals, over direct heat. So we did plenty of that. We fired up big batches of burgers, we made dozens of skewers of sticky glazed beef satay, and we made thick salmon fillets. Now, some of these grills really didn't have a lot of space under the grates to create these cool zones. And as a result, we got some slightly ugly salmon, for instance, that was more burned than seared. But most of the grills did a decent job with direct heat. We did find that we prefer grates that are set in a little, like the Weber's, to provide a backstop. They're not flush with the edge of the grill, so food doesn't have the chance to slip off. And we wanted to be sure we could grill roast a holiday meal, so we checked the fit of a full-size turkey. Some of these grill lids barely fit over a 14-pound bird. Others had plenty of room for the heat to circulate around and cook the food. Now, finally, our favorite grill also has to be able to handle low, slow barbecuing, like when you're making brisket or ribs. So we slow barbecued baby back ribs for four hours. We added coals halfway through. Now, for slower cooking, you want indirect heat. That's when you put the coals over to one side of the grill and the food on the opposite side. Then you want to open the lid vent on the side directly over the food, and that draws the heat and smoke across and over. Now, here we found a problem. The Rosalie grill had its lid vent right in the middle. That sends the heat straight up and out before it even gets to the meat on the other side. This is not as good a design as grills that let you open a lid vent where you need it. In fact, being able to easily adjust vents is really critical to a great barbecue grill. Vents are like your temperature controls, like the dials on your stove. By opening the vents, you let more air into the grill, and that feeds the fire, making it hotter. Closing them a little cuts off some air and makes it cooler. So adjusting the vents on some of these grills is way more difficult than it should be. We like the simple vents on the Weber grill, which you can adjust with a simple lever from the outside. Now low and slow barbecuing also depends on keeping the temperature of the grill very steady for a long time. We tested the temperature retention of the grills by wiring up thermocouple probes to each grill. And we added the same amount of coals, we closed the lids, we left the vents half open, and recorded two hours of temperature readings. Now, not surprisingly, a grill with thin, flimsy walls and big gaps around the lid did a terrible job retaining heat. And that explained why, after four hours, the ribs we cooked on that grill weren't done. Other grills retained heat well, whether they were thick cast aluminum, like this grill from Portable Kitchen, or the enameled steel of the Weber. For low, slow cooking, you want a level, gradual decline of heat over hours. And we got that with the best grills. Now, finally, we rated the grills on how easy they were to clean up after cooking because that makes grilling much less of a chore. Some of these grills have no way to remove ash, so you literally have to shovel them out. Our favorites have an ash catching bucket on the bottom that you can just pull out and dump with one hand, no sweat. Now, among the grills that had a basic design we liked, the tiebreakers came down to the features that made grilling much more easy and pleasant, like those ash catching buckets, or a place to put the lid when you take it off or grill grates with hinges that make it easy to add coals, not force you to take the food off and take off a red-hot grate and put it somewhere, then reassemble it all while the grill cools down. We love side tables or shelves that let you put down tools and platters. We like built-in thermometers. Even one grill that let you start the coals without a match or a chimney starter. This one uses a small propane tank to light the charcoal with the push of a button, and that gives you the convenience of gas with the flavor of charcoal. The one grill that had it all was the Weber Performer Platinum Charcoal Grill with touch-and-go gas ignition. This starts with the same 22 and a half inch kettle as our longtime favorite, but it's set into this really terrific sturdy cart that's easy to move wherever you want it. It also has a built-in thermometer, a lid holder, tool hooks, and an ash catching bucket. The vents are easy to adjust to control the heat and airflow so you get the grilling results you want. And it was the only grill in our lineup with the gas ignition. It costs $349, and we think it's worth it. 
If you need a less expensive option for $150, there's our previous winner, the Weber One Touch Gold 22 and a half inch kettle. This is a great basic grill. It's got plenty of cooking space, fully adjustable vents to let you do any kind of backyard grilling. It's easy to assemble, use and clean, and it's our best buy.